Hello children, our topic today is Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. This is another method of measuring correlation. After scatter diagram, we, we move to Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. Under scatter diagram, you know that we were getting the idea of correlation on the basis of their direction. That means whether positive or negative, right? But in this method of correlation, we get the quantitative measurement of correlation. That means exact measurement in quantity or you can say in figures. So, this involves mathematical calculation. Whereas, in the case of scatter diagram, we were just drawing the diagram and plotting the points and getting an idea about the correlation. So, here this is Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation and why it is known as Carl Pearson's coefficient? Because Carl Pearson was an statistician who started this concept of correlation that is why it is known as Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. Now, it is a quantitative method, right? It is a quantitative method of calculating correlation, right? It gives you the quantitative measurement of correlation. It is a widely used method of studying correlation. Why? Because it gives you the proper exact value of correlation. So, it is a widely used method of correlation. Coefficient of correlation is written as R. This is the symbol used for indicating coefficient of correlation. R means coefficient of correlation, right? Now, main features of this type of correlation is it gives knowledge about direction of correlation that is positive or negative, right? Like scatter diagram, it also gives you the knowledge about the relationship or correlation between any two variables, whether the relation is positive or negative. When you are calculating the values, if the answer you are getting is in minus, it is negative. If it is in plus, it means it is positive. Correlation ranges between plus 1, minus 1 and 0. These are three limits. It ranges between plus 1 and minus 1 and 0 indicates no correlation. It is based on mean and standard deviation which are appropriate measures. So, this type of correlation is calculated by calculating mean and standard deviation. That is why it is considered the most appropriate measure of finding out correlation, right? So, that is why it is widely used because it is based on mean and standard deviation. Now, there are two methods of finding out correlation. Carl Pearson has stated two methods. One is direct method, which is the calculation of correlation by actual mean and second is shortcut method or indirect method in which we find out correlation with the help of assumed mean, right? So, these are two methods. First, we will take the direct method and then after understanding the direct method, we will move to indirect method. Now, first is direct method. These are the steps. Calculate mean values of both the series. You are finding out the correlation between two variables. That means, two series will be given to you and these two series, whether they are moving in the positive direction or they are having positive relation or negative relation, that you can find out first by finding out the mean values of both the series. So, first step is that find out actual mean values of both the series. Second, take deviations of individual values from the mean of both series. That means, after finding out the mean, you have to take out the deviation from actual mean that is x minus x bar. x we are zooming with that 
one series is x and second series is y. So, deviation from x that will be x minus x bar, right. So, take deviations of individual values, there are different values given in the series and you have to take out the deviation of each and every value. That means, take out the deviations of individual values from the mean, from the mean means from the actual mean of both the series. X series is indicated as small x and y series is indicated as small y, right. So, after taking out the deviation of x series, you will name it as small x and after taking out the deviation of y series, you will name it as small y, right. Then take square of deviations, square of x and square of y take square of deviations of both the series and get sigma x square and sigma y square. So, individual item is squared to get x square. Similarly, in the y series individual item is squared to get y square and when you add up x square and y square, what will you get? Sigma x square and sigma y square, right. Now, why do we need to take this? Why do we need to calculate x and y and sigma x square and sigma y square? Because our formula says r is equal to sigma x y upon under root sigma x square into sigma y square. So, this is the formula which was stated by Carl Pearson. If we are taking the correlation or finding out the correlation through actual mean then you have to apply this formula and for assume mean we have different formula, right. So, remember children that whenever you are calculating correlation or coefficient of correlation through actual mean always apply this formula and remember for assume mean you have to apply different formula that will be take we will take later, okay. So, as this is the formula and you have to learn this formula and as this formula says sigma x y. So, we have to calculate x value and y value and then get x y by multiplying x into y and similarly we get x square and y square to put the values here. So, according to this the steps are being followed. If you know the formula, there is no, there no need to mug up the steps, right. If you know the formula, you know that what steps are to be followed to apply the formula in a proper way. So, these are the steps and the formula. Now, the calculation is required to see that how the coefficient of correlation is calculated. Now, let us move to the example. It says calculate coefficient of correlation out of the given data. Two series are given x and y. You are supposed to find out the coefficient of correlation between these two series, right. Now, x is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 y is 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14 and 18. When you get this data and you are supposed to calculate the coefficient of correlation, this is the method what you have to follow. Here I have shown you the solution. After getting the data, you have to make different columns and as you know your formula is sigma x y upon sigma x square into sigma y square. So, first you will copy down x column and then y column, right, these two columns are copied down. Then next step is find out mean of x and mean of y, right. When you find out the mean of x and y, then only you can take out the deviations that is x minus x bar. So, first step is find out the mean of x as well as y, that is mean of both the series. Now, here sigma x 
here this is sigma x this total is 35 so 35 sigma x upon n n is number of items 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so n is 7 sigma x is 35 so when you find out the mean of x series total of this column divided by number of items you get 35 upon 7 that is equal to 5 then y series this is sigma y upon n here sigma y is 70 so 70 upon 7 7 is the number of items and y bar is 10 right this you can name as x bar is equal to and this is y bar is equal to sigma y upon n now after finding out the uh, mean you have to take out the deviations right so this is x column as i told you when you take out the deviation name it small x right so small x is equal to x minus x bar right x bar here is 5 2 minus 5 is minus 3 3 minus 5 is minus 2 4 minus 5 is minus 1 5 minus 5 is 0 6 minus 5 is 1 7 minus 5